All right, let's please hope this is recording. Here is my Inquisitor for Solo Velen, who has had the Valisline removed. Okay, so I'm trying to make a theory here. I don't really know what I'm trying to say. But I am discussing the green glowing fade rocks in the hissing waste, the area where the dwarves lived on the surface. Okay, so my inquisitor is very inquisitive about this place. I've spent hours trying to find the notes on these stupid rocks on my other playthrough. And I don't know if I had the note or not, or I just finally figured out where it was in the codex. So anyway, I wanna look at my glowing face again. Now I'm not in the right same position I was. All right. Anyway, I'm obviously no good at this, but I don't see anybody else that has made a theory about what these green rocks mean. We are in a dwarven land in the hissing waste where they lived on the surface, paragon feral, made all these inventions that the Venatori want. Venatori say, we have been given a chance to redeem ourselves after one of our own failed Corypheus at Redcliffe. The dwarven relics in the tombs are instructions on recreating the masterpieces of one of their finest paragons. They are to be excavated, replicated, and brought back for study. The Elder One is generous to let our prove, prove our worth. Do not spare the slaves. Speed is crucial. Anyway, so yes. They are sacrificing slaves, and they are getting these dwarven relics. Now, are they bringing back samples of these green stones that are obviously have the fade in them? I mean, what else would you call it? They're green. They're from the fade. Um, the main note is... This one. This per book appears to be a diary with strange charts and illustrations drawn beside thin cramped columns of text. At first I thought the rocks that glow fell from the sky, but the spirits whisper that these shards have been here for ages as you reckon them. Did the tear in the veil reveal these stones? Is that why the strangely dressed mages want them? Yesterday they were erecting skulls of all things on top of pillars. The spirits warned me to hide, and if it was a good thing I listened. I saw one of the mages cut a man open with a dagger and milk the power of his blood. I am afraid of a man who could do that to another. It is, it is nothing, as if it is nothing. Thought Templars were supposed to stop blood mages, but the ones that came were strange and red and working with the mages. The spirits agree it is very alarming. They're urging me to run further into the waste, but my supplies are low. I'll go in a few days if hunting goes well. So, this is obviously a mage that speaks with spirits. Talking about the green stones falling from the sky. Rocks fell from the sky. But the spirits say they have been here for ages as you reckoned them. So it was not the tear in the veil that revealed them. Um, okay. Now there's one more thing I want to read. I can remember where it is anyway. The one about... 
not going to remember where it is. I don't think it's up here. It's about this. Blood spattered venatory journal. The entries in the diary alternate between elegantly rounded script and a slanted scrawl. Okay, I recorded this part where Cole says there were two people writing this. So this is this venatory mage and he's possessed. So... I never expected to find such tranquility here. No mattering crowds, no drifts of refuge. I should have been born in the country. I am only disappointed to learn I am here to verify translations, a drudge's work. But in the evening there is time for my own studies. Without distraction or fear of being branded apostate for my readings. It is time to rise to my capabilities. The Elder One has bound spirits, bound spirits far beyond what I thought a mage could manage. We speak of him becoming a god, but surely he cannot be considered mortal any longer. What steps must a man take to become such a being? It is an excellent question. To bask in his glory must be enough, and yet, and yet, I cannot let the curiosity go. Does the Elder One take power from the demons? I've learned much about their summoning and binding. I was surprised to find so many I recognized from the circle among the Venatori, but they talk freely of rites and rituals forbidden in the Imperium. They offer such power for so little blood, but I must not rush tempting as it is. For have I not grown in skill and measure? I cannot draw attention to myself, we will leave. After we unearth these dwarven relics, not stay to practice binding the base denizens to our will, even though would it be, be so easy here, in a place where the veil has grown so thin. I am tired of the fear, fear of harm of what it may do to myself, fear of letting the opportunity slip from me. I must leave it behind me. Binding a demon of higher power is dangerous, yet my skills have grown. What else will I show the others what I'm capable of? What I can offer? I am the mage of the Imperium, and I will claim my birthright. The spirits through the veil will see my power, and they will kneel, or I will make them. So that says, obviously, the veil is very thin in this area. Obviously, there's rocks sticking out here that are infused with the fade. So what does this mean? Paragon Feral came here and built built on the surface. Something dwarves never do. Dwarves do not build on the surface. They live underground. There is nothing recorded of this in the memories. Paragon Feral supposedly um, died, but apparently he did manage to run away to the surface. I don't have all the notes right here. History. Journal on Dwarven Ruins. Either these people loved dwarven architecture or the commonly known fact that dwarves never built cities on the surface is wrong. This is the stuff world famous treaties are made of. The inscriptions in the ruin are in the old tongue for teaching this ungrateful brat old Thank you, Grandmother, for teaching this ungrateful brat, old dwarven. The writings talk about the sad parting 
from the stone. Hundreds of years ago, several houses left their tags to settle here under one leader. Were they running from a war? Or running so there wouldn't be a war? I read and reread the pillars until the light faded. But I know I'm missing something. It's a paragon, the one who led the people here and built the city, was Master Smith Paragon Farrell. Legend says he died in the deep roads during a war between two tigers who used his rune work to build fa fantastic weapons of destruction. If he escaped up here, that means the records are wrong. Or someone a thousand years ago tried to pretty up the truth about his leaving. The most talented shaper of runes in dwarven history escaping with his tower ho entire house to the surface. Now that will fluff some beards in the shape red. My father said our old family business used to be near an archway that was part of Farrell's Paragon statue. I wish I could have shown him this. He's the one that wanted to believe our ancestors in the stone was still guiding us. Be nice to think if it were true, old man. I've just discovered Farrell's tomb in the east. I've never seen something so sodding grand in all my life. I won't write an essay on this place. I won't. I will write a book, several books. I will be rich and bring a whole expedition here, and the University of Arlay will beg me to lecture when I'm not presenting my findings to the Empress herself over dinner. That is, if I can get inside Farrell's tomb. The doors are sealed shut. A group of human mages have moved in. They're digging up buildings deep in the sand. When I tried to approach them, one of the workers dragged me aside and whispered to me to leave before the Venatori caught me. I wasn't going to listen until he showed me his cuts. The mages have been bleeding him for their spells. Wish there was something I can do. The buildings I saw looked like tombs in ancient style. Farrell was a master runesmith. Maybe the city revered his work enough to seal it away. So yeah, and... The other note from the waist talks about dragons. The dwarves were making weapons to fight dragons. Um, what did they call it? A rock or something? Or no, that's like a... Okay, I have to look it up. Okay, so I don't know what the significance of all these fade stones is, but someone else has a theory, and no, I'm sorry, I don't know who it is. I don't know what exactly it is, but the theory is that Farrell's tomb, or underneath the surface here, was where an archdemon or a titan was. And the note on talks about a dragon or dragons plural I was tracing heraldy etched on, etched on a wall when I noticed pictures of weapons with winglets winged lizards worked into the decoration. I spent the rest of the day translating the inscriptions. This verse was apparently passed down through Pharaoh's house, so his father, his father's father, and so on for hundreds of generations. From the stone, have no fear of anything, but the stoneless sky betrays with wings of flame. If the surface must be breached, if there is no other way, Bring weapons against the Urtok. 
and heed their screams. Ertok means dragon. Why was it part of an ancient crest? Why were these dwarves so worried about a monster they'd never see that they worked it into their weapons? This place becomes more impossible every day. And this, I don't know what this has to do with the Chantry woman out here, but a few days ago I turned from a statue to find a woman staring at me. She didn't react when I screamed or when I ran around, picking up my drop notes. When I asked who she was and how long she'd been standing there, she quoted some verses that chant at me. Polite as you please. I offered her some water, but she shook her head, pointed to the east, and said, Blessed are those with fortitude. For they preserve, persevere in the name of the maker. When I glanced back, she was gone. The poor woman must be touched. I don't know how she gets around so quickly in this heat. I discovered one thing interesting in all the mess, the name of this place. I puzzled it from some carvings on the door of Pharaoh's tomb, Kalrapartha, a place where we may meet in peace. I hope they found peace. Well, they didn't really find peace. The people from Feral and his sons didn't find peace. Feral died. His sons tried to build. Why did I save right in front of a fade rift? I don't know. So. Hello, Solus. You can be in the video. So why are these green glowing fade rocks here they didn't fall from the sky they didn't come from the breach they've been here for hundreds of years thousand years because feral came here thousand years ago they look like they could be the same thing as showed up at the breach where obviously right around the breach is all the rocks with the green they have green veins in them not really glowing green like these but they have veins in them which i don't know if there's supposed to be a difference to that either plus they have ones with the red larium veins in them too but the hissing waste is way over here i mean that's if these green rocks were here they would be spread everywhere in the world, right? That would be spread from here, to, from the breach to way over here, right? But no, these are from a thousand years ago. They're in a dwarven place where the dwarves lived on the surface, which is strange. And feral built weapons for dragons and somebody Sorry, I don't know who, but I heard the theory about Feral's tomb being where an old archdemon was. I think it's an old archdemon. It's either an old archdemon or where one of the remaining archdemons live or a place for a titan. I don't even know which one it is. Although a titan would make sense because they mentioned being separated from the stone. The war. They were fighting a war or running from a war. Okay, now the war could be with the elves. This could have to do with the elves 
and the dwarves going to war, when Mithal went to fight the pillars of the earth, and all that. I know there's a different um, deep roads and stuff in Trespasser, but these dwarves ran over here to the surface to get away from the war that was starting or they knew was coming or something. Maybe it does have to do with the ancient elves warring with the dwarves that Feral came to the surface. Um, just, I have no idea. Hundreds of years ago, they were running from a war or running so that there wouldn't be a war. I read and reread the pillars, but I know I am missing something. Yes, there is some theory here, but I don't know what it is. It's most likely connected to the person, the people who know of the theory of the Archdemon or Titan. I don't really know. I wish I remembered. And this was just in my mind. And I just had to make a video about it. Never made any other theory videos. I don't, I'm no good at making theories. So anyway, if anybody knows anything about this, what is the point of these green rocks? Glowing green fade rocks, whatever they are, have been here for hundreds, thousands of years. So, anyway, please let me know any ideas. Thank you for watching. Hopefully somebody knows something more than I do. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.